I gotta cut out these intros, eh? Greetings, salutations, fellow earthlings. <laughs> As the owner of the very best books on metaphysics on planet Earth, and the person that actually knows the good ones from the bad ones, I'll tell you a fact, okay? It's an undeniable fact, is that if you took the top 30 books on the subject about defining the nature of mind, spirit, consciousness, so on and so forth, they, none of them ever really hit close to the mark. You'd have to read all of them, and you'd have to have wisdom to penetrate through the obfuscation of uh, of it all, uh, there's no such thing as a perfect analogies, but a perfect analogy. But there are some that come incredi incredibly close, and um, I've thought of one. And basically, everything fits. And also, too, the reason why the radio analogy fits so perfectly is because it involves a corporeal entity. In this case, is transistors and capacitors and batteries and dials and copper windings and antennas and it evol uh, involves uh, the animating principle or the carrier wave and so I like to make this uh, specific video of metaphysics to clarify things and you don't have to, I used to be a ham radio operator you don't have to know a whole lot about radio to understand this, you don't really have to know much at all um, so I'd like to give you this insight, and people have found this helpful, but I've never actually made a video succinctly defining all these things into uh, you know, one single video that uh, kind of clarifies things, and I think that's important. Um, I talk about the parameters and the interactions. Of course, you can't take this analogy too far. In the case of the radio signal and the radio, you know, we're talking about plastic and metal and capacitors and stuff, and the signal, of course, is not an entity. It is not life itself. By the way, the uh, antenna inside the psychophysical human being is the dipole antenna, which has the only proportionality of Pythagorean incommensurability, and that is water. Water is the dipole antenna of life. It's also, too, the same reason why I have this triangle, which is upside down here. Uh, it's right side up this way. Tattooed on the back of my hand. It's the one one phi incommensurable geometry of Pythagorean perfection. It's the only geometry like that, so that's the perfect analogy for the antenna, which is water. Without water, life is not possible. But that is a dipole antenna, which is the receiving geometry. I don't know if you know much about antennas, but I used to build a lot of antennas. And depending on the frequency spectrum that you wanted to talk on or receive signals from, you would make it a harmonic of that frequency, like HF has a certain, uh, and of course there's quarter wave antennas, half wave, full waves, and if it's a full wave antenna, it has be better gain, or signal to noise ratio. Okay? And the uh, same is true of UHF and VHF, and they're directional antennas, and there's omnidirectional antennas, disc cones and dipoles. There are various uh, geometrical config configurations designed for signal attenuation, where you actually point it at something like a Yagi, which means that you're uh, making it directional to the broadcast station. Uh, but the same is true of life, but let's go on with the uh, radio analogy. The psychophysical, the corporeal husk of existential existence, of course we've got flesh, blood, tissue, so on and so forth, is the radio. And of course, in the case of the radio, we're talking about plastic and metal and capacitors and Nice little batteries, right? We always consuming food to uh, keep our batteries charged without food and without water. We die. Of course, without water, we certainly die. You die a lot sooner from lack of water than you do from lack of food. Um, the carrier signal, okay? We're not talking about the frequency right now. We're talking about the carrier signal, or in this case, the electromagnetic uh, modulation, is the soul, is the nous, is the chitta, is the atman, is the spirit the sanctum. Of course, we can't take that analogy too far in case of the radio because the carrier signal is not animated, it's not alive, it is not a, a sentient, transcendent, incorporeal 
entity, in this case a subject. This is an object. The radio, of course, is an object. Now we're talking about subjects. But when we talk about subjects, we talk about objects. We have to talk about the conjoinment or the consubstantially, consubstantiality thereof. Um, the frequency, of course, say I'm going to tune in to, like right now, 88.9 megahertz, right? way of doing graduation. Yeah. Uh, the frequency is that uh, primordial agnosis, because a frequency is a modulated energy, right? Just as a field is an ether perturbation modality, which, by the way, is the definition of a field, the frequency is the primordial agnosis, the frequency that is tuned. It has modulation. It has frequency. Now we're talking about something that is an anti-frequency here at the end of this little video. High or low frequency would be very closely analogous to uh, relational agnosis, an amplitude thereof. Yeah, high frequency, low frequency modulation, i.e. the frequency that's, uh, that's tuned and then is tunable because there has to be modulation for it to be tunable because the only way that the carrier wave is manifest or can be tunable that's like talking about, that's like a Zen koan, like what's the sound of, uh, of emptiness in the forest or something like that. Of course, there's, there's no sound. Sound is a perturbation of the air. Nobody hears a non-sound. So we actually have the medium where no sound exists. Without uh, modulation, as measured in frequency, we have no, nothing that is manifest. And certainly so, therefore, thence, nothing that is tunable. The broadcast listen closely, is empirical consciousness. You see there's a difference between the signal in our radio analogy. Of course, we don't need to pay attention to uh, the, uh, the broadcasting station, if you will, a really tall tower, say 15 miles away or something like that. And it is kind of analog analogously uh, connected, but the... Uh, the uh, I don't want to tune in a radio station because, you know, everything is... A lot of swing states, a lot of people who would have otherwise recoiled in horror saying, no, it's time to truly consider... The broadcast is not the same thing as the modulation of the frequency. The actual signal, which of course is everywhere around us, all this radio does is it doesn't draw it in. It makes it consubstantial to this radio. This is a tuning device. All this thing does is take what is already present and tune it in. The broadcast itself is the perfect analogy of empirical consciousness. In English, mind consciousness and nous and uh, chitta, for example, they're not differentiated out like they are in uh, ancient Greek and Indian metaphysics. So there's not a distinction in the mind of a native English speaker of that. But in the perfect analogy of monistic metaphysics, the broadcast is empirical consciousness. Because the broadcast, which is broadcast, of course, through the speakers, 98,000 deaths. Emirates Air that broadcast is not the same as the signal. That is empirical consciousness. The signal would be analogous to the nus or the chitta, not analogous to consciousness. Consciousness is the broadcast because the consciousness is consubstantial to the radio and the signal. Kind of like white light through an orange filter, you get orange light. Uh, white light through a red filter, you get red light, right? Well, that red light and that uh, orange light, that would be analogous to the consubstantial broadcast, which is consubstantial in the case of the light of the filter and the light. You know, so the broadcast is empirical consciousness. Um, if the radio were alive, which of course it's not, obviously let's not take that analogy too far, but if it were and it could hear itself and see itself and brush itself, brush its teeth in the morning in the mirror like everybody else, uh, it would be that false identity. That consubstantiality magnifies, usually, but not always, magnifies the agnosis. It becomes reflexive, or the primordial agnosis, which is an uncaused cause becomes magnified through the prism of the consubstantiality of the signal and the radio. And the broadcast would, of course, be that empirical consciousness, which is self-reflexive and by means of its agnosis identifies itself as this. You know, I'm brushing, just imagine this were a living entity, brushing its teeth in the mirror. That is me. That is who I am. You know, the psychophysical, Bob, Sue, Larry, so on and so forth.
then it becomes a chained uh, identification phenomenology of false identity of that which it is not due to the consubstantiality of the signal and the radio which is the living entity the ex empirical living entity of, uh, of the persona non grata the psychophysical living being and therefore it becomes either magnified in most instances or it becomes uh, almost never uh, diminution thereof the recognition vis-a-vis -vis wisdom that this is not who I am you know the person who is living and breathing and looking in the mirror and so on and so forth is the broadcast it's not the radio and it's not the signal the radio falls apart it decays you know it collapses the batteries die out and some people always say what happens and this is always the question you see in every form of metaphysics the uh, initiate mind says, what happens when I die? It's like, well, what makes you think you are that which dies? What dies is this. Does anybody suffer under the delusion that there's a signal in this radio? No. There's a broadcast from this radio, but that broadcast is not the radio, and that broadcast is not the signal. And it's also, too, not the carrier wave. Nor is it the essence or essa of the carrier wave, which would be the electromagnetic modulation, but even prior to that, the medium of the perturbation, which of course would be the ether, or the agathon, or the absolute. Poor signal-to-noise ratio would be the physical damage of the antenna, or drugs, for example, or alcohol, or self-inflicted uh, self uh, mental trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder, on and on and on and on. You know a poor signal-to-noise ratio is kind of like where you get a weak signal. It's too far off in the distance. A workplace. See this? Stand that's on. A version of the yellow. Yeah. Mostly static. The signal kind of comes through. There's still a broadcast, but uh, the signal has poor signal-to-noise ratio or poor gain coordinate to the radio. A near perfect analogy there too. Death, of course, like I said, would be a failure of the radio, the battery, or both. Carrier modulation, of course, is like uh, one's personality. And we're talking about whether it's amplitude modulation or frequency modulation. We don't have to take that analogy too far and confuse people. It would be prakriti or nature, be it frequency modulation or that amplitude modulation is the personality. But that's not the carrier wave, and that's not the frequency. It's got the carrier wave, the frequency, amplitude modulation, or frequency modulation makes no difference, really. There is no signal in the radio. Nobody is the broadcast, and nobody is the radio. But due to the consubstantiality of the signal and the radio, which is that living, in the case of a living being, which is that animated living, um, animated... Uh, living broadcast we see ourselves as that we think that which is suffer that we are that which suffers we are that which undergoes perpetual unending change until death and we are not that um, so the radio analogy is nearly perfect it's not totally perfect but it's better than any other one out there because all the criteria fit some of them nearly a hundred percent and there's a reason for that because we have a we have a physical object here, and we have an etheric principle, which is the animating principle of the radio. That is the reason why my, and it is mine, I didn't like take it from somebody, my radio analogy is closer than anything else out there in understanding, giving someone a window of understanding, specifically in differentiating out the signal from the radio and the both of those from the broadcast. Also, too, how that signal is tuned. Um, liberation is an untunable energy or an anti-field. No radio can tune an unmodulated energy, which is boundless. It's in counter space and without attribute. Um, a signal is an ether perturbation. You know, the frequency of the broadcast is an ether perturbation. It's a frequency with modulation, be it uh, amplitude or frequency modulation. Um, we're talking about an untunable energy, which is unperturbed energy, which is boundless, 
and forever transcendent to this psychophysical. That's why when whatever happens to this, which everybody knows what the fate of this physical radio is, makes no difference. This is what the old phrase, dead man walking, made reference to. Someone that is transcendent before the physical body is dead. The physical body is completely irrelevant of transcendence occurring one way or the other. It doesn't matter if it's dead, living. This has no bearing on it. It has no bearing whatsoever. In a pure analogy, the radio, by means of conventional ignorance, uh, also, too, influences the carrier frequency, usually for the worst. This is where one with say, level one primordial agnosis, now, of course, identifies by means of the reflexive broadcast as the radio and the broadcast. And this becomes a reflexive, uh, demonstrable, demeaning, self-destructive conjoinment. And, of course, the conjoinment is only due to agnosis. But agnosis is a perturbation, is a primordial agnosis, uh, primordial uh, condition, uh, kind of like light and illumination. Nobody sees light, by the way. Everybody sees illumination. Uh, light is a principle. Nobody sees light. People see illumination. And illumination is resistance, whether it be capacitance, resistance, magnetic permeability, dielectric permittivity. All of those are applicable to the coaxial circuit of light, by the way. For example, if we were to have a thought experiment, an invisible person would be completely blind, right? You know, they're transparent, kind of like the invisible girl. An invisible person would be 100% blind because nothing of their physical nature, if there were such a thing as an invisible person, would uh, never have light manifest. Nobody sees light. That's why an invisible person, not that an invisible person exists, vis invisible physical person, invisible people exist, invisible entities exist, obviously so. These are just disembodied beings. I'm talking about an invisible physical person would never ever see light. Light requires manifestation, and that manifestation, of course, is illumination. And that is what the carrier signal is. It is modulated. And since it's modulated, it's tunable. And that's all the radio does, is it, uh, it uh, doesn't capture, that would be a horrible, incorrect word. It tunes a signal that is tunable with an antenna, capacitors, resistance, um, resistors, excuse me, and batteries, and so on and so forth. That is how any signal is tunable. That tunability means that the ether perturbation modality of one's very existence in nature is modulated such that it will make manifestation when consubstantial coordination and tunability is made between that transcendent principle, i.e. the broadcast, or in your case the frequency, or what you consider your personality, which is who you truly are, versus this. And when it manifests as this, then we have the consubstantiality of both, which is the broadcast. That broadcast is empirical consciousness. Uh, the ancient Indians called it vinyana. By the way, the word vinyana literally means ignorance or agnosis. It is vi, meaning opposite, absence of, nyana, gnosis, insight. So the word, the ancient word for consciousness also means ignorance, which is, by metaphysical definition, perfection. We don't have that in English, but uh, the ancient Greek and uh, Prakrit Pali, we do. Uh, also to Sanskrit, but that came from Prakrit, so we don't have to talk about that. Anyway, that is my radio analogy of monistic metaphysics to make things much more simple. I hope you understand then what consubstantiality is, like the broadcast is not the frequency or the carrier broadcast, you know, meaning from the, from the broadcast hour. You know, we're talking about the, the broadcast of animation, which is empirical consciousness. And the broadcast goes no further than the signal or the frequency that is the signal, which is tunable because it is an energy modulation. It goes no further than the radio. The broadcast is not the self. The radio is not the self. The person, the true person, the spirit, spirit the sanctum, the purisha, the maha purisha, specifically in ancient Pali, the atman, the tathagata, that is the signal. But in the case of transcendence, it is the signal that has become, by means of gnosis, wisdom, and insight, unmodulated. And an unmodulated signal cannot be tuned by any radio on this earth. You might want to repeat that part over.
an unmodulated signal cannot be tuned or uh, anything by any radio. Think about what that means in relationship to agnosis and wisdom. Wisdom, by the way, in all forms of ancient metaphysics is indifferentiate from the Atman, or soul. Wisdom is the soul. To seek after the soul is wisdom. Wisdom culminates in the soul. Wisdom and the soul are two, one and the same thing. It's the self that seeks after itself. The true self is meant, i.e. the signal, not the broadcast, yeah? not, which is broadcast from this speaker. I hope I cleared things up a little bit. It's not a perfect analogy, but it's better than any out there on Earth. And of that, there is no denying. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. If you do, any donation is always kindly welcome. Or you can tell me how much you hated it. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Lux Everitus.